Hello everyone, my name is Liam Brotherton. In today's video, we'll be detailing how to create your very own custom helmet for use on the iRacing service by utilizing a free software called GIMP. Now this video is exclusively about how to utilize the helmet template to create custom helmets. It is not about how to create paint schemes and utilize the GIMP software. For that, I'd highly recommend watching my first video that I did a couple weeks back. It'll give you all the things you need to know in order to create your own custom paint schemes and to be able to create your own custom helmets, which I'll detail in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Head to the left-hand side of the iRacing UI, click on My Content, and then Paint Shop. Up at the top, you'll click Design Your Helmet, and it'll pull up this little viewer here. As you can see, I have one of the many iRacing base templates selected here. And if you just want something simple, go ahead and stop right here. Change your three colors, change your pattern, you're good to go. But if you want something a bit more custom, say like putting your name on it, or adding specific sponsors or changing the visor color. That's what this video is all about. If you want to do that, go ahead and click on this download template button here. You'll be able to download the save file we're going to need to open in GIMP in order to paint this helmet. If you want to design your suit, it's the same thing. Just click on this design suit option, download template, and you'll be able to utilize that. However, today we're just talking about the helmet. Once you have that helmet file opened up inside GIMP, it'll look something just like this, a 2D splayed out version of a three-dimensional helmet. You see the sun visors here at the top, the weather stripping with the iRacing decal. We got some seat belt covers. We have the right hand side of the helmet, the left hand side of the helmet, and some air deflectors up here in the top that are used on some of the open wheel cars. Once we are finished, it looks something like this. You'll have some paint design work, you'll have some decals, and you'll have some coloration on your visors. Or maybe it'll look something like this, my Loki inspired helmet. Or maybe it'll look something like this, my Winter Soldier inspired helmet. Hey, it could even look like this. Or, or even like this, a Bo-Katan inspired helmet from Star Wars with some shading on it. First, we're gonna open up our turn off before exporting folder and turn on our wireframe and reduce that opacity so it's a little easier to work with. We're gonna head down to this paintable area. We're gonna come down here, right click to create a new layer group. Call this a design. Right click again, new layer, call this example, and click OK. Go ahead and grab my rectangle select tool, hold control and then scroll wheel to zoom in. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and select a little section here, hit shift B, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint right here. Hit control shift A to deselect. You also do that right here where it says none. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn off before exporting, hit control shift E, or come over here, click export as, then we're going to go to our Documents, iRacing, Paint. And then we're just going to dump into this general paint area, Helmet underscore User ID. How you find your User ID is very simple. Head back to the iRacing UI. Click on your helmet in the top right. Click on Account. It'll be right here at the top for me, 399417. So heading back, Helmet underscore 399417. Go ahead and export that and head back to our helmet viewer. Now, as you can see, if we scroll around, you can see that little rectangle we made. However, you're gonna immediately notice something we're gonna fight a ton today, and that is something called warping. So if we head back to this template, we'll notice that, well, this rectangle is straight, completely straight up and down with the right-hand side of the helmet. However, you noticed uh, this is not a straight line, and it's particularly not even here on this rightermost section from the leftmost section. This leftmost section is almost straight, just a little curved, while this forward section here has a big kink in it. And you can see that kink right here in the file as it comes along through here and then redirects this direction. Now if I was to say move this file over and then re-export it, now of course a section of that is getting cut out. So you see all the way through this green line, all this is getting cut out. However, it changes directions really aggressively in addition to that. And so what this creates is a very difficult to use helmet template for a lot of different intricate designs. So what I'd recommend in general is to try and avoid these tricky pain points. Any area where you see a big kink in the helmet design or an edge in general, say the back half of the template here on either side. As you come around to the back of the helmet, what I'm gonna do, showcase that real quick. 
say grab this section here. You notice this line through here. Now say we were to make a straight line all the way across. You think that they should come and meet each other here in the back. As you can tell, they absolutely do not. Now this has a little bit less to do with warping as it goes on to a three-dimensional object like this area does, but rather just th this is a very old template that Iris and created and isn't very well optimized. So you want to avoid anything that's going to cross over these back half sections of the helmet unless you're willing to put in a lot of work lining up and changing things as they come across the helmet. So let's go ahead and get started. Creating a new layer, I'm just going to call this Design 1. I'm going to go to Helmet Color, and I'm going to go ahead and change my colors. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab maybe a, uh, a nice white. And I'm going to go back up here to my wire and go to Colorize, change that real quick so I can see it. There we go. And coming back down here, I want to design a TRD-inspired helmet. And what I've done is scour the internet for some related files to our project. I'm going to go ahead and import them here into our file. So I'm going to hit Control-Alt-O to open as layers. I'm going to go to my files, and I'm just going to open up the related ones I want. So the car, let's go with this color palette here, and say this TRD, and this Toyota logo. So we'll open up all of these. The way I open multiple files at once is just holding control. By the way, it's just holding control. I like to select multiple at once. So all those files there, we're going to downscale some of these so they're a little less obtrusive. So again, hitting Shift S, go ahead and downscale this real quick, holding control to do it evenly, hitting scale. Uh, I think that should be good. Turning off a few of these. There we go. Just going to go ahead and hit M to move this around. Drag this up, holding control, make it go straight up and down. Hitting control S, downscale this a little bit, move this over here. Go ahead and just be inspired by it. Go ahead and turn this layer back on. Hit O. I'm going to grab this yellow, hit Shift B, paint real quick, hit control Z to undo. O again, grab the orange, Shift B. Paint, Control Z, you get the deal. Grab the red. And now we have swatches for all those colors here within our colors. I'm going to delete that one. We've got our Toyota decal here, TRD. Downscale this a little bit. And there we go, another TRD logo. Well, cool. So, what I want to mimic is this striped pattern and with the Toyota text throughout. So, let's go ahead and get started with that. Coming down here to design. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a little rectangle tool, and I'm just going to paint a nice big rectangle. Hit Shift B, then come up here to Layer, Crop to Selection. There we go. Grabbing the M for Move tool, move this right here. I'm going to hit Shift H. It's going to shear. I'm just going to shear this thing back, probably about that much. Just go to 240. That should work. Hit Shear. And I'm going to drag this over here, say right about here-ish. I'm going to duplicate this layer, lock my alpha channel, make it white, shift B. I'm going to drag this over, say about, I think 60 should work. Duplicate. Let's go ahead and grab our orange. Drag this back, say probably, what about, about eight. That should work. Duplicate. White. We'll get there eventually. Drag this back. I think we did 60 earlier. Do another 8 to the red. There we go. That should give us some stripes. So let's go ahead and close this back up. Hit Control E to quick export. Back to the helmet. Now we can see we have some stripes. Now these are meeting up here at the top. This is going to be very difficult to line up. I want to give this a shot. We have some little stripes on the side. Cool deal. Heading back in. I'm just going to click alpha to selection real quick. Crop to selection, just so I can shrink this down a little bit. I'm going to duplicate this layer. Hit layer, transform, flip horizontally. Grab my move tool, holding control. I'm going to move this over to the sand side of the car, or the helmet, sorry. And we'll go ahead and turn that off and try this again. Let's see how these lined up. 
first shot, not very well. So let's go ahead and move these forward a little bit. Say about that much. Pretty close, so let's back it up by maybe another one. I think we did pretty good. So that's about as good as we can get that there. Now, one thing that we could do is actually bend this section of these lines so they don't come to a point we don't want to. Let's try that out real quick. So heading back over to our original design, let's just, all right, so turning off the designs, we're going to create a new one. Let's call this second design. And we're going to turn this on real quick. We're going to grab our path tool. Grab a couple of sections right here, and then just one that runs all the way down. Perfect. Now up here, I'm going to take this, pull this down to probably about right there. All right, and let's try and bend this this direction. And holding control, we're just grabbing these little nodes, pull it along through there. Maybe backing this up a little bit, it's a little more curved. Pull this a little further along. Maybe something like that. A little kink right at the end. Okay. All right. We'll just repeat the same process that we did before. So clicking enter. We're just going to grab our yellow again and start this process all over again. All right, as you can tell, that was a very difficult and painful process of so just moving those little lines around to kind of get them a little bit more aligned. As you can tell from certain angles, it's always going to look bad. That's just part of this helmet template. But overall, I feel like these do match up a little bit better than they did before. Heading back on the template here. Next thing we're going to do, I'm going to grab these original design layers and delete this one. And I'm just going to grab this and move this down in this region here. Say shrink this down a little bit, you know, shift S, pull this down a little bit more. All right, I'm going to duplicate this red layer, move it back a little bit, merge down, duplicate, move this back a little bit more. All right, duplicate this one more time, and let's go to the white. Let's move this to about I don't know, right about there. All right, let's add a new layer, merge down. And I'm just going to add this little white kink right here. All right, I'm going to drag these beneath these other two. And that should give us a little extra detail right here on the front. All right, so let's try this again. Let's go ahead and alpha selection. All right, to duplicate real quick. And again, I'm about 17 pixels away from the center line, so we'll kind of drag it somewhere around there, reflecting it over. Maybe about 17 pixels. Let's see how this is looking on this side. It's a lot tighter on this side, so we might have to change up some stuff here. That looks kind of even. What we might go ahead and do is separate the sections that are right here. So maybe we'll move, duplicate this. All right, I'm going to grab a, grab a selection here. We go down to right about there. Add a layer mask from selection. I'm going to invert by hitting Control-I. Do the same thing for this area. What that's done is kind of cut this in half. How far do I have between these two? Kind of looks like it's about, about 28. So let's try and mimic that on this side. So I'll just grab this, move it over, and we'll do it 28. That way they're kind of even. That looks pretty good. Cool deal. And what we'll do, is I'm just going to drag this back over until they line up again. Yep, there we go. 
perfect. So got a little skinnier right here. And it's a little different than on this side, but overall I think it kind of helps match the, the curvature fairly all right. And just using the visor to help cover that up. So we have a little TRD paint section here. That's looking kind of cool. So let's go ahead and add something kind of fun to our visor. So coming up to the visor here, we're just going to alpha lock here. And we're just going to paint this the yellow color here and export. And you see it kind of gives a nice metallic layer to it. We're going to want to do some extra fun to it. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab our, our files here. Let's go with, uh, let's, see, let's go with this big one here. Let's drag this up here to the visor. Let's go with about there-ish. We're just going to merge down filters, blur, Gaussian blur. Just going to grow that a little bit. Right about there looks good. Alpha selection, we're just going to delete sections we don't need. So again, just alpha selection, control I, control X. There we go. Got that deleted. Hit alpha selection again, layer crop selection. All right, just look how that looks. Yeah, cool. It's got that little fade that I'm looking for. All we got to do is just now mix that on the other side. So let's duplicate that layer, transform, flip horizontally. We are, what, like four pixels from the side there. We'll just drag this over here. Move this four pixels back. And just like that, we have a cool-looking visor. So let's add some decals. Go in here. Let's say call this Toyota. And... We can go up here to the top where we had these files earlier. Let's just drag these down here into the Toyota decals. Perfect. All right, let's go with the TRD one first. It's just duplicating that. I'm going to move this down here. Let's go ahead and shrink it down. Drag it right where we want it. I'm going to grow it. Pull it back down. There we go. Got a little TRD logo. All right, let's add a Toyota decal right here on the visor patch. So let's duplicate that. I'm going to drag this whole thing up here. All right, let's drag this up. Let's go ahead and shrink this down. One nice trick that you can do is just get these sides sized where you want them. Make sure that we're centered. And then we can just hold control, and it'll kind of expand evenly all at once. Kind of come to about there. I'm going to grab our select tool, select all this Toyota section, grab the alpha lock, and we'll just paint that white. What we can then do is on the helmet sun strip, we're just going to alpha lock this to black. And just export that. There we go, got a little Toyota decal there. Realizing we have a little issue right here. So let's fix that real quick. So I'm just going to cut this section out, honestly. Bang, cut that out, duplicate. I'm just going to drag this down and merge down. There we go. Fix that problem real quick. And drag this down to it sort of vaguely fits. And do the same thing over here, just kind of moving it over. There we go. So again, everything should be ready to rock. Fix up that little detail there. Let's go ahead and talk about what's happening here on the left-hand side of the screen. I've gone ahead and color-coded these sections as air deflectors. I'm going to load up into the sim using the Delara F3 vehicle, just so that we can go ahead and showcase what's going on here. So again, Control e get our helmet. Let's go ahead and load up in the sim. Once you've got the car loaded in the sim, you're going to want to hit Control r it's going to refresh your helmet design there. I'm going to hit Control F12. It's going to bring up this camera edit option. I'm just going to use the WASAD on my keyboard, W A S and D. I'm going to pivot my car around so I, or my camera around, so I can see what's happening here. So I can see we have the air deflector, the green one, right here at the back of my helmet, and we can't see any of the others on this particular helmet. So we should be good. Just to go ahead and paint this with a matching stripe of our orange, red, and yellow, and it should look just fine. Or if you're feeling a little lazy, you can just paint this black and call it a day. 
I'm going to go ahead and match that up. All right, so I spent some time kind of reflecting the design that we did earlier onto this little air deflector. That way, for the most part, it kind of lines up, vaguely looks somewhat all right. Back inside GIMP, looks somewhat like this here, just kind of reflecting these designs from earlier up here. Now, if I wanted to make this look correct, I would go ahead and fix this little kink. But since it's not super noticeable, I'm just going to kind of leave it as it is. As from back here, it looks pretty good. All right, one last thing to mention here are the seatbelt color options, this little green patch here. As you can tell, I have it set to green, and if I go ahead and export it, and we load up inside the iRacing simulator, hit Control R, you'll notice that these seatbelts are still red. Some of the cars will allow you to change the, the seatbelts, some of them won't. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint these black and call it a day. You'll also notice that I did the seatbelt covers here as these Toyota badges and black. And you see it says iRacing in sim. Again, some of the older cars will allow you to paint them. Some of the newer cars will not. Just bear that in mind. Sometimes they will be paintable and sometimes they will not. Last thing to bear in mind real quick about using any painting within iRacing's uh, render itself. If you hit Control R without your driver in the car, it will not update the paint scheme. You'll need to be actually inside the car. So just make sure in the replay you can see your driver inside the car. Hit Control R and it will update. So just keep that in mind. You have to have your car inside during the replay. So make sure that the seat is not empty like this. Make sure the seat has its driver in it when you hit Control R. That way it'll actually refresh. With that, you basically know everything there is to know about creating a custom helmet for use in iRacing. These little edges here will always be your license color. No way to get rid of them, unfortunately. It's just the way it is now. So main takeaways is to try and avoid any tricky template lines like up here in the corners or here at the back. And if you do, you're going to be in for a treat because it's always going to be difficult. And to keep in mind that you may need to load into an open wheel car to see something like that air deflector that's at the back of the template. With that, I hope you all have a great day.